All right, everybody. So we're going to go over how we approach a patient who comes in complaining of joint pain. So remember, even though a lot of my videos are uh, focused on one disease at a time, patients don't come in complaining of a disease. They come in complaining of a symptom. So you need to have a general idea of how to approach a symptom. So how to approach a cough, how to approach epigastric pain, how to approach um, a bloody nose, how to approach joint pain. Um, that will help you because when you get those CCS questions, you're going to have a patient coming in with a complaint and then you need to figure out how to work that out, how to formulate a differential. So what we're going to talk about here is you've got a patient coming in with joint pain. What do we do? How do we approach it? How do we work it up? I'm not going to go into treatment here. I'm going to go into how we figure out a diagnosis. And then I have other videos where once you know your diagnosis, then, you know, how do we treat it? Okay. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel by clicking the box and hitting subscribe and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. All right, so this is the anatomy of the joint. Notice you have two bones coming together. They're lined by cartilage at the interface. In between them, you have synovial fluid, which essentially acts as a shock absorber. Um, now, the synovial fluid can get infected, and that would cause joint pain. Um, it can also get infiltrated by inflammatory cells causing an inflammation. That would cause joint pain. So there's a variety of things that can happen here. The anatomy is not super important. Um, it's just important to have a conceptual understanding of um, how these joints work. All right, so joint pain is a major cause of disability and morbidity, particularly in older people. It's hard to encounter somebody over the age of 60 that doesn't have joint pain. And usually that's osteoarthritis, but there are a number of causes of joint pain that we always need to keep in mind. You can't just assume a 65-year-old who's coming in with knee pain has osteoarthritis. You need to do a workup. Now, what's the difference between arthralgia and arthritis? Well, arthralgia is pain roughly in the area of the joint. Now, it could be referred. So you might have muscle pain and you appreciate it at your elbow. If you ever go and work out, that uh, will cause arthralgias. Um, it may be referred uh, from a tendon, so that would be enthesitis. Um, or it may be bone pain. So maybe you have uh, a tumor or maybe you have osteomyelitis and you may appreciate that in joint. So arthralgia is a nonspecific term, just pain that is either at the joint or referred to the joint. Now arthritis can, can be the cause of arthralgia, but arthritis is a specific process. What you have here is inflammation of the joint structure itself. It is virtually impossible to differentiate the two without doing at least a physical exam, getting a history, and often we'll need to do labs. Um, so the synovial fluid itself is an ultrafiltrate of the serum. So any kind of systemic inflammatory disease can cause uh, synovitis and hence arthritis as a possible symptom. This is your differential for joint pain. All right, so um, it can be traumatic. You can get an infection. That includes septic arthritis, but look at all these causes, gonococcal, non-gonococcal, Lyme disease. You can even have it caused by viruses, mycobacterium, fungal joint infections. Some of these that sound more exotic are more the domain of the immunocompromised. The crystalline arthropathies, I have a whole video on that, gout and pseudogout. Degenerative arthropathies, namely here including osteoarthritis, malignancies, which usually cause referred pain. Um, actually, it looks like I included that twice. Uh, and then the rheumatic diseases, which I go into at length in this rheumatology section. So here more than ever, it is essential to have a good history and physical exam in order to make a proper diagnosis or at least narrow down your differential. I like this mnemonic, it's called SLICE, and if you understand the S, the L, the I, the C, and the E of every um, possible cause of joint pain, you will have a really good idea of your differential. 
So S for systemic. Does the patient have any other symptoms that accompany the joint pain? Do they have a malar rash? Well, that would point to lupus. Do they have ulnar deviation? And that's not really systemic, but we're looking for other signs. That would point to RA. Do they have pain when they wake up and maybe a fever? That would point to uh, an inflammatory cause. Or are they septic? That would point to septic arthritis. Location. Which joint is sore? Is it one joint? Is it multiple? Is it symmetric? Um, inflammation. Is it an inflamed joint? Is it red on the outside? That would be a really inflamed joint. Um, is it fluctuant? Um, C for chronicity. Is this a recent onset? Did this come on a couple days ago? Or is has this been going on for years? Um, e for evidence of trauma. That's fairly straightforward. And so you can take this, like I do, and you can make a table. Um, so here we have osteoarthritis, RA, psoriatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and septic arthritis. And you can see that we can differentiate these. Um, so if you make a table like this and you understand how each of these present, you will, uh, it'll go a long way in helping you with your differential. All right, so these are extra articular symptoms that you can have with particular arthritis. Namely, here we're talking about the rheumatologic causes. Um, so um, with an infection, you would expect to see a septic-like picture is if you're talking about septic arthritis. So these patients may be hypotensive. They almost always will have a fever. Um, however, um, we look for other possible causes of infection too. Um, now with Lyme disease, you're not gonna be septic, but you can have erythema migrans, for instance. With malignancy, uh, that would cause a referred joint pain, so any of the bony tumors. Um, so look for things like pallor, easy bruising, infection elsewhere, um, typical signs we would see with any cancer. And then the rheumatologic and autoimmune disorders. I'm not going to go into all of these here because each one of these I give their own specific talk. So I have a talk on lupus. I have a talk on RA. I have a talk on the seronegative spondyloarthropathies. I have a talk on Sjogren. I have a talk on MCTD. And I have a talk on the vasculitides, which includes Wagner's. Okay? So you can go back and watch those if you wish. What never has extra articular symptoms? osteoarthritis. Okay, so that stands alone. It's just joint pain. Now, the laboratory workup, anytime you have a patient with joint pain, you at least need to get a plain radiograph of the joint. Okay, that's really important because we're looking for injury. Remember, injury to the bone surrounding the joint can easily refer to that joint. If you have an inflamed and swollen joint fluctuation, especially if it's red, um, then you need to get a joint aspirate. However, be very careful if you're dealing with a red warm joint, you wanna make sure you're ruling out um, things like um, uh, cellulitis um, because you could seed the joint. So you gotta be very careful there. Uh, get a sed rate, get a CRP, get a rheumatoid factor, anti-CCP, ANA. Um, this is a good workup for an inflamed and swollen joint. And then of course you wanna to add to that a plain radiograph because usually these hurt. Um, if they have extra articular symptoms, that's when you need to start thinking about getting an ANA and uh, specific autoantibodies depending on the presentation. So this is my workup. If I get a new patient coming in with joint pain, am I gonna order all these all the time? Maybe not. Are there things I might add? Sure, uh, but this is a good, basic workup. So you get a CBC and BMP, get an x-ray of the affected joint, get a joint aspiration, um, provided there's no contraindications. Now, are you gonna get a joint aspiration of the PIP joints? No, we're talking knees here, hips, maybe elbows. Uh, get a sed rate and CRP, we're looking for inflammation. Get a urinalysis. Some of these um, rheumatologic causes can cause renal issues. Um, so if you have a proteinuria, a hematuria, red blood cell casts, you're looking at a glomerulonephritis, that's going to help you narrow down your differential. Get an ANA, that's kind of a screening test for all those um, 
individual anti-nuclear antibodies. So if that comes back positive, then you want to get specific autoantibodies. However, if you have a patient coming in with joint pain and a malar rash, um, then yeah, you're going to jump right to anti-DSDNA and anti-Smith, for instance. Uh, get a rheumatoid factor, screen for rheumatoid arthritis. You can even add on anti-CCP if, if you want. Now, this is uh, the arthrocentesis, which we do to analyze the joint fluid. So when would you want to do this? If you've got a red, warm, swollen, painful joint, just make sure that you know that this patient doesn't have a cellulitis because we definitely do not want to go in and seed the joint. Uh, so when we get the fluid, we look for the four C's, color, cells, crystals under the microscope, and then we get a culture. Uh, the joint aspiration is the best initial diagnostic step when we are suspecting gout, pseudogout, or septic arthritis. Because with gout and pseudogout, you've got to look for the crystals under the microscope, no other way. And septic arthritis, you've got to know what you're growing. Now, there are some relative contraindications for joint aspirations. As I already said, overlying cellulitis, it's a big one. Coagulopathy or bleeding disorders. Uh, joint prosthesis, it's not a contraindication itself. It's just we wouldn't do it in the office. We would send these patients to orthopedic surgery. An acute fracture, adjacent osteomyelitis, or an uncooperative patient. This is the synovial fluid analysis. You need to be aware of how these look. Most of what we're dealing with in, with the rheumatologic conditions like RA and lupus and stuff like that is going to be under the inflammatory. Non-inflammatory, this would be like osteoarthritis. Hemorrhagic, this would be if you had a, an injury. Um, and then septic arthritis um, would be septic arthritis. Okay. So back here, this would be like your RA and your lupus and your psoriatic arthritis and so forth. Now these are the autoantibodies that are associated with various rheumatologic disorders. Um, so you, these ones you have to know for your exam. Now I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna talk about all these, but I go into all of these disorders in individual videos. So if they're not making any sense to you, go back and watch those videos. Rheumatoid factor anti-CCP, that's rheumatoid arthritis, you've got to know that. Remember, rheumatoid factor is not an anti-nuclear antibody, so you need to order that separate. And then the ANCAs. So you want to know these. C anca is Wegner's or granulomatosis with polyangiitis because Dr. Wegner was not a good guy. And also ulcerative colitis, which can be associated with an enteropathic arthritis, along with Crohn's, uh, but ulcerative colitis would have the C anca. Uh, P. Anca is eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, which is Churg-Strauss, and microscopic polyangiitis. Um, so go back and watch my uh, vasculitides, uh, small and medium vessel vasculitides, for more about that. And then this is a nice little cheat sheet. I did not make this um, credit up here. Uh, but this is really all you need to know about rheumatologic conditions. This is really, really, really a good table um, for you to understand all these. And I do go into pretty much all of this. Lupus, I touch a little bit on antiphospholipid syndrome. Sjogren's, mixed connective tissue, RA, uh, myositis, scleroderma, and uh, then these ANCAs. I, I go over these in the vasculitides.